And okay, so in this section, I'm going to show you how to set up your Heroku settings. So they're a little bit more production ready. Now, the first thing is the dynos. If we go into our dashboard, look at your app and look at the resources section, you can see that it says free dynos at the top. Now, currently at the time of recording, Heroku by default gives you some free dynos, which are kind of just free servers, free servers to run your application on. And it limits it to a certain number of hours each month. Not a full, it's not enough to have your computer to your dyno running 24 hours a day, seven days a week for the full month. It's pretty close, but it's not enough to run it 24 hours a day, seven days a week, which is fine. If you've only got a couple of users and you're just starting to, starting to launch your app, your app will typically not really get that much hits anyway. But the other problem with it is, is that if no one's actually using your application, after about half an hour or an hour, it'll kind of just wind down. Okay, it'll kind of just switch off. And then the next time somebody tries to make a request, the first request might take you know 60 seconds as it starts launching your dyno again. That's just one of the things they do with free dynos, just to you know save money on their side, because they are giving it away for free, but something that perhaps isn't so useful to you if you're actually trying to build and release an application. So the thing you probably want to do is you want to, instead of free downloads, downloads you want to upgrade to hobby at the very least. So if you click on that, you can see that we have a couple of options. So we have the free one here right now, which is $0 a month. If you want to upgrade to hobby, you can upgrade to hobby for $7 per dyno per month, which is pretty good actually still. And you only pay $7 if the app is running at 24 hours a day, seven days a week for the full month. But you don't really get really great support or uptime with this particular thing. So, you know, they don't guarantee a really great uptime with Hobby. So it's kind of up to you. It's, it's not that much money. So I definitely think it's, a, it's worthwhile going to the Hobby from free. But if you really want to go production, you want to go for the production professional level servers. So there's a couple of different options. There's standard 1X, 2X, performance, M and L, and the prices range from $25 a month to $500 a month per server. Which one you go for is up to you. I'd say if you're definitely going to production, then click on this one. I'm just gonna go ahead and click on this one just so you can see what it looks like. So then I click save. So now I'm using professional dynos. The other thing I can do is I can actually increase the number of servers that I'm using. So I can increase them just by dragging this slider. So if I, if I can go wild and go to 100, or let's say I know that my server's gonna get quite a lot of hits over the next couple of days. Perhaps I'm expecting an article written about me in TechCrunch or something along those lines. You can quickly go into Heroku, smooth the slider up, hit confirm, and there you go. You suddenly scaled your application five times. That's one of the really powerful features of Heroku. That's why I love Heroku. It's very, very easy to scale your application up and down. Now, I don't really want to spend 125 pounds a month, so I'm going to go back to one. I'm going to save it there. And again, you only pay pro rata for the month. So if I only do this for one day of the month, I'm going to have to pay less than $1. And really, you can do the same with the various other settings you've got here. Now, depending on the resource, I probably won't upgrade it to the next tier unless I have to. I mean, with Mailgun, I get quite a few emails I can send for free. So I won't upgrade to the basic unless I reach that limit. What's the point? So for now, I'm gonna keep that to free. Now, the MLab is a, is, a different, is a different case. It's a database. It's a very, very important part of my application. So I actually will more likely want to upgrade it from away from the sandbox version. The sandbox is the free version. I won't get very good support. It won't have very good uptime. I really want to use something where I pay some money and I've got somebody I can call if things go wrong. So I might upgrade that to the $18 one. Okay. Now, when moving from the sandbox, it doesn't automatically upgrade because it won't actually copy your data from sandbox to the shared cluster that you've just created. So the way to do that is if you, it'll pop up a little message here, click the link, and then when you open it up, it'll give you a set of instructions that for you to run on your local machine, which will dump your data, destroy your existing MongoDB, add another MongoDB, and restore the Mongo, the dump that you created previously. Now, if you don't really care about your data, another thing that you can do is you can just 
remove it from your plan, and then add it back in again. And that way you won't have to go through this uh, migration process, especially if you, don't, if you don't care about the data, you can just go, go right ahead and do that. But typically you probably do care a little bit about your data and you probably wanna migrate some across. And again with paper trail, I wouldn't bother upgrading paper trail until I reach their, their, their limits for their, for their free plan. So just something to think about. The main thing I would change is the professional dyno and the database. The other ones, depending on what they are and what you've chosen, just keep to the free tier and don't upgrade until you, you, you absolutely have to.